Hey, what's up everyone? Vegetarian Zombie here, and I want to welcome you back to Beginning C Sharp with Unity. In this episode, we're going to be covering conditionals. So far in this series, you've learned how to create variables, you've learned how to assign data into those variables, and you've also learned how to manipulate that data within those variables. But now comes a point where you want to make choices based on what that data is. And we have, right now, you have no mechanisms of doing that. And that's what we're going to be covering in this episode. We're going to be diving into what is known as conditionals. To create a conditional, you're going to be using the keyword if. You start with the keyword if, and then you have a pair of parentheses. In this parentheses, you're going to put your condition. Now, the condition will get into exactly how this condition works in just a moment. But ultimately, it's going to come down to a true or false value. It always must become a Boolean value. And we'll be, like I said, we'll return to this in just a moment. Once you have your condition in your parentheses, you're going to put an open brace. This open brace means if the condition is true, any code past that open brace will run. And of course, once you're done with that code, you're going to put a close brace. So that block of code will run if the condition is true. Now you actually have some options here. If you wanted to make some additional conditions, you can put after the closing brace an else if statement. You'd put else if, and then you'd put another pair of parentheses and another condition. After that pair of parentheses, you'd put an open brace, a close brace, and any code you want to run within this optional else if statement. And finally, you even have another option as well. You can have, uh, after the closing brace, you can put an else statement there and then use an open brace and a closing brace and put code within that, within that block. And the way it would work is first the code would first check the first condition and if it wasn't true, it would go to the else if condition. Now if that condition wasn't true, it would then default to the else condition. Like I said, the only thing that's required is the first if. The else if and the else is purely optional. Okay, now let's return back to the actual condition. As I mentioned, that the condition must evaluate to a true or false value. And the first way we can do this is actually just by using a Boolean value. Let's imagine we had a Boolean value called is alive. We could simply put that within the parentheses, and if it's true, it would then play it would then the code would go into the true block and then otherwise it would then go into the else if or else blocks you can also write an expression within there say for instance you wanted to check if the number of lives is greater than zero you can use a simple greater than sign for this you would do number of lives greater than zero and this will evaluate to a true or false condition you can do a less than sign as well Sometimes you want to check equality. Let's imagine you want to check if the number of lives was three lives. You could put number of lives equals equals zero. This will then check if the, those two values are the same. If they're equal, then the condition will then go into the true block and otherwise it would go through the else, the else blocks below. Just like you can check to see if something is equal, you can do something is not equal. And to do this, you would use the exclamation point equals. The exclamation point is really the not operator. It makes a true value false and a, val a false value true. If you take the exclamation point and say, put it immediately before a Boolean value, it will then switch that Boolean value to its opposite value. But we can also use it to check to see if something is not equal. Again, let's take this variable number of lives, and we're going to see if it doesn't equal 3. We would do number of lives, exclamation point, equals 3. And that's just the reverse. And again, you can use the exclamation point in other ways as well. For instance, if you had an expression that eva evaluated true or false, and let's say the expression was false, if you put that exclamation point right before that, that condition, then it would be the reverse of that condition would be would go into the actual immediate following 
code block. For instance, if we had is alive equals false, and this is a Boolean value, and we put that within the condition, and then we put a exclamation point there, then that would be true, and then it would go into that block. And the same goes with the previous conditions which we've just covered. There is going to be times when you want to have multiple conditions in the same if block. Let's say, for instance, you wanted to do, you want to check to see if something, the player's number of lives is greater than zero and their score is greater than zero. If this condition is true, then you would want some code to, to print, maybe to print the score in the upper right hand corner of the screen. To do this, you're going to use the ampersand ampersand. The way this works is you put your first condition in the parentheses and then you would put ampersand ampersand. This is a compound condition. Now you're adding another condition after that and then both of these conditions have to be true in order to enter the true block, the immediate code block of the if statement. Now there are times when you just want something to be either or or and this is where we would use the or and this the or is two two pipe characters and the way it works is we have our two conditions and the code first evaluates the first condition if the first condition is false then it goes to the second condition if the second condition is true then the code goes into the if block you can combine these two together so that you would have a compound condition we could say let's number of lives is greater than zero or score is greater than zero and we'll say level is greater than one. The way it would work is that first it would look at the number of lives and if that's false then the code will evaluate those two conditions and if those conditions are both true then it would enter the if the true part of the if block. These may all seem a little strange and a little bit complicated at first but you'll be using a lot of if statements in your code and after a while this will just seem like second nature. Now before I go into a demonstration about how these work, I just want to take a moment and briefly touch on scope. So far we're creating an if block and you can see that we put our code within the braces. Now within these braces you can create new variables and you can use them within that code block but here's the thing, once you leave that if block you're now going out of scope, meaning those variables that you create in those if block will no longer be around once you leave that if block. Now this if block can access other variables that were def defined before it, but if you try to use any variables that you use within that if block, say later in your code, then what will happen is you'll run into a compile error. Those variables within the if block will be out of scope and the computer won't know about them by the time you get out of the if block. We'll be talking about scope later on in this series, but it's important for you to understand this now that you're diving into blocks, for instance. Okay, let's get on to a demonstration. Here I have Unity open, and we're going to go back to our Hello World script as usual. So far, we've been doing everything within the onDisable method. And the reason for this is because I wanted you to see an action occur when you clicked on a button or clicked on a part of the interface. And that way you can prepare yourself mentally for what was going to happen and then see the then click on, say, a checkbox and see the result as opposed to it just showing on the screen and having you not mentally understand what was about to occur. Now we're going to veer off using the onDisable in this lesson and we're going to start using update. Up, update is a method that is called once per frame. So if you have a game that is running at 60 frames per second, then this method will be called 60 times. And likewise, if you have more or less frames, it will be called more or less times. This is kind of important to realize when you're working it. You'll be using the update method a lot. But the more code you use in it, just remember the more code it will run as your game is running. So you want to avoid putting really number crunching heavy stuff within an update as it could really affect the performance of your game. So I'm going to delete all these. What I'm going to do is create a very simple guessing game. First we're going to create a number. 
and this is what the user will guess. And now I'm going to create a private variable and this will just simply be previous guest. You may be wondering what a private variable is. This just means the inspector can't see my variable and other scripts can't access it as well. I just want my script to, to know about this variable. Now, why is it that we're having a previous guest? You'll see it in just a moment. Now I'm going to create my update method like so. And to demonstrate that this runs every frame, we'll just print out a message. I'm going to save it. I'm going to switch back to Unity. And if I run this, you can see in the console, it's just outputting, hello world. Now I'm going to create another variable and I'm going to call this hidden number or secret number. How's that sound? I'm going to create another method and this is called start. This occurs only once when my script starts and this is useful for for setting up things. For instance, configuring your scripts before they actually start being used. Okay. Now what we're going to do is generate a secret number from zero, we'll say from one to 10, like so, and we're going to assign it. We're going to do this from a random, and then we're going to call range. And from here, we're going to put in our minimal, minimum value, which is one, and our max value is 10. And that's how you generate a random number. Now we're gonna, going to delete this. And what I'll do is I'll set this, explicitly set this to zero and we'll set the previous guess equals zero as well. Now in update, I'll do my first if statement. If my guess doesn't equal my previous guess, meaning I am now making a new guess, then we'll do this logic that goes here. Now when you're working with code, you're gonna see lots of different brace styles. You can see this brace style and you'll see people put brace styling like this. This is really a user preference. There is no right and wrong answer to this. And there's been actually many holy wars trying to determine which is the best style. I personally like this style better because it gives my code some breathing room. But I also code like this as well per a lot of the style conventions I use at my job. Okay, so now we know that my guess is not a previous equals a previous guess. So this is a new guess. Now we want to check to see if I pick the secret number. To do this, we're going to make another check. And here we go. We can have if statements within if statements. We'll say if my guess equals, now we're checking to see if they're equal, the secret number. Now we're going to say debug log you win, like so. Now we're going to put in else like so, else if my guess is greater than secret number, we're just leaving a message too high. And now I'll put another else here because we know if they guess the number, we have a condition if they guess the number and we also have a condition if they guess lower, higher than the number. And now we'll put a condition. Now we know that this, this guess is actually lower. So I'll just put a simple message to low. And with that done, we're going to now set my previous guess equals, whoops, equals my guess, like so. Okay, I'm going to save this, and let's see if this works. We're going to clear the console, 
and now I'm going to select my game object. In fact, I'm going to move the console down here and we'll play. Let's select the game object and open up the console. So here's my guess. Now I'm going to put in 5 and you can see we have 2 high. Okay, let's put 1. Too low, you win. I'm not too sure why that condition fired. So I'm going to do a quick little debug right here and I'm going to debug the secret number just to see exactly what's going on there. Now I'm, I'm going to build and run. We'll switch back. We'll try five again. The secret number is six. Let's try seven. You can see it's too high. And then we do six. Oh, what was happening there was the update runs. And what was happening is when we delete this to put in a new number, you'll see that it's being set to zero. The reason is, is in between the time I have to take to add in a new number, the frame grab already grabs that value, which is nothing, and then says it's a zero. That's why, that's exactly what's going on. Okay, that's working with conditions. Like I said, they may seem a little bit difficult in the beginning or a little bit unwieldy, but in time, you'll see they're quite easy to use and quite natural to use as well. All right, here's what your assignment is. I want you to create three arrays. I want one array to contain names. I want another array to contain a score. So let's say between one and 10, and you can use the random range to generate that number. And then I want you to create another array that contains, that contains whether the player is alive or dead. And you can manually just type in, you know, true, false for each one. And you're gonna have five entries. You don't have to put this in the inspector. It's probably easier you just do this in code. And then I want you to create a if statement that will be fired on, on disable. The way it should work is that if the player is dead, it should print out a message, you are dead. If the player is alive and their score is less than five, you can write out the player's name didn't do so well and put their score. And if they're, if they're alive and their score is greater and equal than five, then you should write the player name did really well and print out the score. And again, we'll review the answer in the next episode. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them, leave them to me in the comments below. In the next episode, we're going to be covering the ternary operator. Exciting times ahead. Thanks again, and I will see you in the next episode. See you then.